Hello, here we are in Lent. You know what Lent is, don't you? It's the 40 days from Ash Wednesday and 40 nights which lead up to Easter. What do we do in Lent? Well, we pray and we fast and we give. What do we pray about? Well, the first thing we can pray about is asking Jesus to forgive us for all the things we've done wrong. That's not just for children, that's for adults as well. We all do things wrong at times. And to say sorry to Jesus, just like a parent or a friend, when you say sorry to them, they still love you, even though you know you have done wrong things. Then the next thing is we fast. Lots of people give things up for, for Lent, chocolate, cheese, cakes, fish, meat. It doesn't have to be food though. I mean, they are remembering when Jesus was in the desert and he had no food. But maybe you could give up something you really enjoy doing like playing a game on your game console. Give it up for one day a week. Or, horror, horror, give up your phone one day a week. Whatever, as long as you are doing giving up something that you enjoy doing. And the third thing is to give. Some people give to their charities all the money they've saved by not eating chocolate cake or chocolate biscuits. But you could gather up all your old toys <coughs> and take them to a charity shop when they're open. Or maybe you could do good things. You could do a good turn for your mum. You could bake some cakes and maybe sell them to your neighbours and give them money to a charity you want to. Or maybe you could give some food to the food bank. There are lots of things you can do to be kind. So there we are. That's what Lent is all about. Pray, fast and give. And I hope you will take it seriously. I'm sure you will. I know that one or two of you last year gave up chocolate for the whole of Lent, which was amazing. Well done. Juliet is reading the story this week. She's reading the story of Jesus in the desert when he was preparing to do God's work. Close your eyes for a moment. Try to picture what you think Jesus looks like. Doesn't matter, there's no right or wrong answer. Do you think he looks happy, smiling, or tired and sad? Has he got long hair? Or short? Has he got a beard? Or messy hair with a halo? Or is he a baby in a manger? Okay, open your eyes. Well, in this story, Jesus was around 30 years old when he asked John the Baptist to baptise him. Try to imagine the scene. Crowds of people stood next to the cool waters of the River Jordan, all wanting to be baptised. And there was Jesus telling John that it was time for him to be baptised. John wasn't sure, but he did baptise Jesus in the River Jordan anyway. And as Jesus came out of the water, the sky opened up and a bright light shone down on him. The Spirit of God came down like a dove and landed on Jesus. Then a voice from above said, This is my son. I love him and I am pleased with him. After being baptised, Jesus was led into the desert by the Holy Spirit. 
A minute ago, he was hearing God say how pleased he was with him, and now he was suddenly all alone in a dangerous place. Jesus had no food, and he went hungry for 40 days and nights. During this time, the devil tempted him and challenged him about being the Son of God. The devil often tempts us when we're tired and hungry and feeling weak. Well, this time Jesus was facing the biggest challenge ever. And remember, he's like us. He's just a man. He's fully human. And he had to make some important decisions. First, the devil tried to tempt Jesus by asking him to change some stones into bread. Well, we know Jesus could turn water into wine and make lots of multiply fish and loaves, because we've read about that already in other Bible stories. But this time, Jesus didn't change the stones. He responded to the devil by quoting the word of God, just showing how he trusts God only. Second, the devil took Jesus to the top of a temple in the holy city of Jerusalem and asked him to throw himself down and let the angels catch him. The devil even quoted from Psalms 91 in the Bible, but Jesus also quoted from the Bible. He quoted a verse about not putting God to the test. Jesus is the Son of God. Third, the devil took Jesus to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He offered it all to Jesus if Jesus would just bow down and worship him. But how could the devil offer the world when it doesn't even belong to him? It belongs to God. Jesus answered that we should worship God only. Jesus is the Son of God. Then the devil left and the angels came to care for Jesus. Jesus had faced every temptation, but he'd resisted. He didn't sin and he didn't give in to the devil. Now he was ready to work hard. And for around three and a half years, he did. He spent his time telling everyone about God his Father. Jesus is the Son of God. Hello, now it's my turn to do the craft today and this is what we're going to make. It can either be a mouse, a cat, a gerbil, a hamster, a rat, anything you like. But you'll need to get the stuff together before we start. So you need a sock, a child's sock will do. In fact, that would be better. You need something to stuff the stock with. You need two eyes so that it can see. You need two ears. You need a nose. And you need a long piece of string. So what you do first is you stuff your sock quite firmly, but it doesn't really matter how much you put in. As long as you get it right up to the toe. I'll put a bit more in mine because mine are big socks. You just need one of your socks or even one better, one of your little one's socks. Right, and then you tie your string round the heel. And you tie that tightly so the stuffing can't come out. Right, then you can leave that like that and you're going to make his face. 
Right, first of all, the easiest one to do is to put on the eyes. If you haven't got any googly eyes, it doesn't matter. You can draw them on. Because we can't get things these days, can we? Because the shops are shut. Googly eyes. Then with a bit of glue, where you want to put the ears, a little bit of glue and glue it on. Mine will have to lie flat. But I'm sure you can work out a way where they'll stand up. Right, and then you put on his nose. As I say, you might want to use a button. You could use buttons for eyes as well. Right, and then you need, if you've got a, a marker pen, you can put in his whiskers, whatever. Now that's not hard, is it? Right? Now the idea is that she's lent mouse or lent hamster or whatever, and you tie a knot in his tail every time you do some good things. So I made my mum a cup of tea when she was tired. There's a knot. I tidied up my bedroom without being moaned at. There's another knot. I made an Easter card for the lady next door who lives on her own. Another knot. I wonder how many knots you'll get by Easter. Do you think you could get one knot per week? That would be good. That's it. Can you all make one of those? I'm sure you can. Stop. Right, the second craft I've got for you today is to make pretzel scones. Now normally pretzels are made out of dough but this is far quicker and easier for you to make. And pretzels are made to remind us to pray during Lent because in the olden days when people prayed they put their hands like this and if you look carefully you can almost see that's happening there. There's one arm and there's the other. I think um, something's happened there, one arm's thicker than the other, but never mind. Right, you must promise me though, that you don't do any of this on your own. You must get permission or someone to do it with you. Right, and the first thing you need to do is to get all the stuff together and wash your hands. Now that's all we've heard since last March, isn't it? Wash your hands. But when you're preparing food, that's what you must do. The recipe for this, these scone pretzels, you will find on the attachments to the Sunday School video. Right, so first of all, you need 100 grams of self-raising flour. You need 30 grams of butter. You need some milk, whoops, to mix, you need a tablespoon spoonful of sugar, you need a pinch of salt, and you need one egg and a cup to mix it in. You need a knife to mix, and that's where we go. Are we ready? Here we go. First of all, break up the butter into the flour and then with your fingertips and lightly, you mix that till it looks like breadcrumbs. Right. You notice I've got a pinion because I'm a messy cook. I 
Okay, we're up to the second elbow, so you can't see all that over me. Right, so it looks like fine breadcrumbs. And try and guess is all the flour mixed in. Right, very lightly. Don't be heavy handed with this or they'll be rock hard. Right, next you mix in the sugar and the pinch of salt, just not much salt, and you mix that in. And then you're going to mix with milk a bit at a time. Because you don't want to make it too sticky, which is probably just what I'm doing. So it's looking like that now. Now you might want to get your hands in. I've made mine a bit sticky, never mind. Cooking is not my skill. But there we go. And I should have put some flour down because I have made it too sticky. <coughs> Carry on. Right. Don't do what I just did. I made it far too messy. And so I had to put some flour down on my mat. Right. So we're going to divide it into six. One, two, three, one two, four, five, six. Right, then you're going to get one of the things you've got and you're going to roll it gently. And keep rolling till you get a nice sausage, a great long sausage. You might have to put it together again like that and do it again, but just be patient. It's coming, you see. There's a big fat bit there. Now it's going thinner and thinner and thinner. Try and guess it's all the same size. Gosh, it never works when you're being watched, especially when you're hopeless cook. There. Right, now here comes the tricky bit. Because you've got to make it. If you don't have it long enough, you'll never do this. Right, you turn it round like that, then bring that end under, you get better at doing this the more you go on, Ugh, that's a mess, but you've got the two arms coming, one under, one over, shall I have another go? a bit sticky right when you've done all six when you've done all six you get your egg crack it into a cup whisk it up and then you paint the scone with your egg and you put them on your you put them on your greased tin and of course it won't come off put them on your greased tin like that 
and then put them in the oven for 10 minutes. Right? One eighty degrees. My husband's just signaled to me. You've already switched that oven on, so that's all right. Now then, I hope yours turn out very well, because I have a feeling mine may not. But then, we're not all good at everything, and I'm not very good at baking. But I've had a go, so you have a go, and make sure that someone's with you when you do. And for any home economic teachers or mums who are wonderful bakers or anything like that, I'm sorry, but I did try. Thank you. Hello again, it's Sunday school time, as you can see in the background. Um, I've got some flowers and that's a nice flower and a banner in the background as well. It was my birthday yesterday, so they made me very happy. Um, I don't know if any of you remember, but a few years ago in church, and I think in schools as well, we were learning about the 40 acts of kindness, which is sometimes something we do for Lent. Um, sometimes people try to give up something in the time of Lent to think how difficult it must have been for Jesus in the wilderness. And sometimes people do what's called the 40 acts of kindness, which is to try to do something nice every day throughout the period of Lent. And I think it's a good way of having us think about our lives as well and how we treat other people. Because doing something lovely for other people makes you really happy inside as well, doesn't it? When you bring a smile and happiness to someone else's day, it makes you happy too. Our song today shows us Wesley's puppets teaching us about how to let our little light shine. And that's a bit the same as what we've been talking about. When you do things for other people, it's a good way of letting our light shine. So let's have a look at the um, the video that we've got today and we can have a little sing along together. Okay, here we go then. <clears throat> The light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Every day, every day, every day, in every way, I'm gonna let my little light shine. <clears throat> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Every day, every day, every day, in every way. I'm gonna let my little light shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Every day, every day, every day. I'm gonna let my little light shine On a Monday On a Tuesday On a Wednesday On a Thursday On a Friday On a Saturday On a Sunday The power divine Let my little light shine this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Every day, every day, every 
So every day, as you can see, maybe you could think of a way to let your light shine. Perhaps you could be make a special effort at home with your mum and dad and with your brothers or sisters. Or you could bake a cake and maybe share it with your neighbours or leave some on their doorstep and ring them to tell them. Or just ring your grandparents and say hi or ring a friend or um, a neighbour nearby. There's lots of ways that we can let our light shine. <clears throat> so perhaps you can make it your challenge to have a think how you can make your little light shine. Have a good few weeks and we'll see you soon. Bye. And this is the Sunday School prayer for this week. Let's pray. Dear Lord, please show me what I should do to give up Lent. And when I've given it up, Remind me to pray to you instead, to thank you, to love you, to hear from you, each and every day in Lent. Amen. <laughs>